I'm joined by James Ferguson, who's head of strategy at Arbuthnot Securities. James, thank you so much for coming in. Now, l let's hope that actually next year will be a little bit smoother than this year. But if we don't get a resolution with, I, I guess, the debt crisis, but also in the United States, and if before we're absolutely sure that we're not falling back in a recession, will, will markets be much of the same? Well, I think you know the problem with markets is that um, relatively recently, markets were the beginning of the third quarter. In fact, markets were very complacent. They were very confident. Uh, we'd almost made a complete rebound back to the sort of 2007 highs. Um, we were hanging out, feeling pretty pleased with ourselves, and everyone was talking about V-shaped recovery. And now everyone's beginning to realise that that wasn't a V-shaped recovery at all. That was uh, a pale shadow of a V-shaped recovery, and it was bought at huge expense by uh, mainly fiscal expenditure, QE, uh, and uh, money printing, and, and that sort of thing. So therefore, uh, now we're about to approach 2012, which is where we're going to have all those fiscal taps turned off. The emerging markets are all um, tightening up uh, because they're trying to slow their own economies because they've got a totally different problem to us, which is inflation. Uh, we now look at a 2012 outlook that looks pretty bleak. If at that same time people are going to lose confidence on European banks, which is beginning to become better an issue, then uh, the outlook is, is pretty tricky. I, I think the near-term outlook for Q4 could be... Uh, be on the downside, not the upside, I'm afraid. But so what, more volatility, and what does it mean on how you play the markets? Just well, volatility for the usually, next two years? Volatility usually spikes when prices go down. So in actual fact, more volatility is usually code for prices falling. falling. Um, and so on that basis, yes, I think at the moment, the markets have been hanging out here for a month, a month and a bit, um, sort of bouncing up and down in a range after that very sharp drop in the summer, going, well, I was really super confident at the beginning of the summer, sharp drop, that's now sort of dented my confidence. We're in this discussion range in the market, um, and now the news is starting to come through looking fundamentally much more bleak for next year. Um, but is it really coming much more bleak, or is, it, is there still a 50-50 chance that actually th this is just a blip and we'll be recovering and there will be slow growth, but at least we'll be growing? Or, or do you now think that actually it's tilting towards the, the, the worst news? Well, the most important thing to understand about banks is that when banks are looking after themselves, they're not looking after the rest of us. And that means they're forcing the private sector to run a surplus, which means that the private sector can't really grow. So all the so-called growth that we've largely had in the Western world has actually been totally public sector driven. So the issue is if the public sector pulls back, which they're now planning to do with austerity measures because the debt to GDP levels have gone too high, um, then of course we're going to look at a, a distinct slowdown in growth, possibly even double debt next year. So, um, but they do have the ability to panic and turn around their, their, their policy and start turning the taps on again. So nothing's written in stone. But uh, talk me through exactly what you tell your investors and your clients to do. I mean, in this kind of like panicky situation, I'm not sure exactly what's happening in 2012. I don't know if we're really facing a recession. How much cash do you hold and in what asset classes do you want to be most present in? Well, we've been very, very keen on, on government bonds. Um, I'm not sure there are many other people who have been, but we've been very keen on government bonds now for a Which good two years or more. <laughs> well, developed market, long dated government bonds. Um, AAA or dated, well, also when you say, yes, I mean, AAA, Treasury. that's the ratings agency. They're behind the curve. So we're looking at people who are basically running um, uh, either not too much of a deficit or at least have the ability um, in a proper sort of economy to, to tax their way back uh, uh, into sort of balance in the, in the medium term. So we US would include Germany, the UK in that, and we would and include the, the US in that, and Germany, of course. But it's a crowded market. Um, well, it's, well, most people have been, been unreservedly bearish about this. In fact, uh, JP Morgan Investor Sentiment on bonds uh, on treasuries in the US um, has been, has, hasn't gone with this rally at all. So the markets have failed to understand that, that the generation of huge surpluses has not gone away, but there's a, been a creation of a whole new set of surplus, forced surplus generators in terms of the private sector um, and the banking sector that are also now demanding these sorts of instruments. So the market needs to basically get its head straight on what's going on. It, it kind of put the blinkers on during the, what appeared to be a V-shaped recovery because I mean, I've seen this before, I know how this ends, it, we're good to go. And now they realize maybe they're not so good to go. It doesn't mean the end of the world. But it does mean an awful lot of people are probably in the wrong assets, and therefore that means volatility. And that's what we saw, actually. That, and, and we did see that sharp fall, actually, because some of the positions from the hedge fund managers were, were so over leveraged that they just had to get out as quickly as they could. In terms of asset, other asset classes, so you like bonds, you like government bonds that are sustainable where they can raise taxes. Equities, risk Basically, we like, we like what you probably can, can encapsulate as risk off uh, trades. We like the dollar. We like uh, developed market government bonds. Uh, we like defensive equities, high yielding equities. We like uh, equities with strong balance sheets. Um, and as far as banks are concerned, uh, we've been very, very bearish all the way through. But we're just beginning to see uh, glimmers of hope in the US, which is the first uh, economy in and the one where the, the damage was done earliest on. So whereas Europe might not even have started its banking crisis yet, we reckon 
Citigroup looks like a really interesting proposition in the U.S. Defensive stocks here in Europe and in the U.S. are also in emerging markets. We had actually a poll yesterday on Bloomberg saying that 50% of re respondents think Chinese growth is going to slow to 5% in five years. We had some... Five years. <laughs> it, it, concerning, well, actually, I think 12% thought it, it would happen in the next year. <laughs> so are, are you expecting a soft landing, a hard landing? Are they decoupled? Would you be very concerned about the emerging markets right now? I think there's a big concern about the emerging markets. They are the risk on trade. They're where you go if you think that the world's going to be doing well. The emerging markets, governments and central banks are all putting the, 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 the clamps on them for the next 12 months in order to uh, get inflation out of the system. Meanwhile, uh, 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 the international fund flows don't buy emerging markets unless they're looking super hot and sexy because you've got corporate governance issues and you've got all sorts of other risk issues. And therefore, I think that the outlook in the near term um, for those sorts of markets um, looks, looks less attractive. And so that means commodities also. If you're expecting China to slow down significantly, which I don't know if you are, but if you are, then that will have a direct impact on all of the commodities. Absolutely. China went through it into a sort of kind of panic mode when the, when the Great Recession started and, and switched its economic um, um, sort of uh, center of gravity radically towards infrastructure. That infrastructure meant that they had to import a huge amount of, of raw materials. But that's a completely unsustainable uh, way to go. Nearly 50% of their economy is being uh, directed, or GDP is being directed towards infrastructure spend and if they stop that or slow that down then we're suddenly I think we're going to get a real lurch down in, in uh, marginal demand mm -hmm. for commodities and you can see it in the charts already copper looks a shocker yeah it does James thank you uh, thanks again for joining us James Ferguson who's head of strategy at Arbuthnot Securities